Welcome back. My name is Dr. Ruth Williams, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Glaucoma Research Foundation's second annual Glaucoma Patient Summit. We would like to thank Allergan, our presenting sponsor, for their leadership support of this event. Our Living with Glaucoma segment is presented by Dr. Constance Okeke. Dr. Okeke received her undergraduate and medical degrees from Yale and trained in ophthalmology at the Wilmer Eye Institute of Johns Hopkins in Maryland. She completed her glaucoma fellowship training as a HEED research fellow at the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute of University of Miami. She is currently at Virginia Eye Consultants. Dr. Okeke has two decades of glaucoma experience and she is passionate about preventing blindness through medical missions and glaucoma awareness campaigns. She has recently published a glaucoma guidebook with tips for patients living with glaucoma. Please welcome Dr. Constance Okeke. Hello, it is such a pleasure to be with you today. And I have the opportunity to talk to you about living with glaucoma. These are words of advice that I think that every glaucoma patient should know about. What we're gonna to cover today are, what does good glaucoma care look like? Where we'll be speaking about effective strategies that I think are great to be able to help you work really, really well with your doctor. We'll also talk about action steps uh, for those of you who have vision loss despite being treated for glaucoma and good questions to be able to ask your doctor. Uh, we'll be also covering beneficial lifestyle changes outside of the regular treatment for glaucoma that are helpful. And we'll finish with some discussion on emotional and psychological support with patients with glaucoma. I feel well qualified to talk about these topics. I've been practicing ophthalmology for over 20 years and have enjoyed being able to educate both doctors as well as patients. Um, I have books uh, out um, written on helping doctors learn how to do certain types of glaucoma surgery and an upcoming book for patients called the Glaucoma Guidebook uh, that shares a lot of pearls and wisdom from what I've gained over the years and things I'd love every patient to know about. And the book will be coming out sometime in the fall. So when we talk about glaucoma, we're all aware that glaucoma is a serious uh, eye condition and a disease that can cause vision loss and potential blindness. And if a patient goes to the doctor and gets a diagnosis of glaucoma, this can be very frightening and a very heavy, uh, cause a very heavy feeling. Uh, when you've gotten information from the doctor and you leave the office, sometimes you're still left with questions and bewilderment about how you're going to be able to handle this disease and live with it. Uh, and one of the th great things that I've loved working with the Glaucoma Research Foundation is they do a lot of patient education focused on helping patients live with glaucoma. Uh, the good news is that glaucoma can be treated and that there is information available to help uh, take action because I believe knowledge is power and that's why we're here today. So what does good glaucoma care look like? Uh, characteristics of a good glaucoma care, uh, one, start with confidence in your doctor. It's really important for a patient to have confidence in the doctor because they're going to be giving them advice and recommendations that the patient should be able to take. If that confidence is not there, then the patient may not do what's recommended and that might be the detriment to someone's vision. So it's very important to have that feeling of confidence with your doctor. Uh, good patient doctor rapport uh, is one where you feel like you're being listened to. Uh, doctors should be able to listen to your concerns and your, um, uh, your questions so that you can provide solutions. They can provide solutions to those problems and also give you reassurance um, and a feeling that there's a good plan in place to help you preserve your vision. Also, it's important for them to be able to explain the difference, different treatment options. There are multiple options for treating glaucoma. And as they explain them, um, they help uh, tell you why uh, they feel that there, uh, a certain treatment might be better for you uh, at this time. Uh, it's also important for them to be available, available for follow-up care because glaucoma is a chronic condition that doesn't go away. So being able to have um, that ability to get access to the doctor and follow up with them is very important. So another question is, how can I effectively work with my doctor? Uh, there are certain effective strategies that can help you have a very good um, uh, relationship with your doctor. And one is making sure you keep track of your appointments. Follow-up care is vital to uh, maintaining uh, glaucoma, uh, being able to assess if there's a problem or if things are stable. 
So being able to follow up regularly is very important. Also, as you go to your appointment, it's important to prepare for that appointment, asking or writing down questions or concerns that you might have that had happened over the last uh, months between exams so that when you're in front of the doctor, you use that time that you have to get those questions and concerns answered. Uh, it's also important to be very open and honest with your doctor. I know as a patient, you want to please the doctor, make sure the doctor knows that you're doing what they told you to do, but life happens. And sometimes there are issues that are related to the treatment that we as doctors need to know about so we can come up with a better plan or solution for you. Maybe your medications have caused irritation in your eye to the point where you don't want to use it and don't use it. Or maybe the cost of the medicine is so much that uh, you're not able to get it or you try to stretch the medicine, which is not effective treatment for you either. Uh, or maybe the regimen is just too much and you're having a lot of trouble remembering. All of these things are important for your doctor to know about so that they can address these issues and talk to you about solutions for them because there are other options. There are typically multiple other options that can be done in order to try to help these problems. So another thing to talk about is what can you do if you still have vision loss? Unfortunately, with glaucoma, even if despite our best care, patients do lose vision and can lose vision. Um, and some of the important things to know about for people who have vision loss with glaucoma is that there are steps that you can take to try to help your situation. First is to never lose hope. Uh, there's always uh, something more that you can do in order to help uh, your condition or help how, how you approach um, everyday living. Uh, one important thing is to know that there are um, uh, low vision evaluations. These are specific evaluations typically with an optometrist who's trained in low vision care. In those appointments, they don't just uh, refract you for glasses. What they do is they examine you, understand where your limitations are, understand what specific activities you might be having trouble with so that they can find aids in order to help. The aids might be as simple as a magnifying glass, but there's different types of magnifiers and different types that can help certain, um, certain uh, issues. For example, if you're having trouble writing your checks or trouble reading the newspaper, there might be certain devices that aid uh, and make it comfortable for you to do those things more easily. Uh, there are also uh, other things such as uh, simple advice about uh, using things with more contrast or certain lights that help uh, you to be able to see better in your home or in the environment that you're in. Um, also, there are certain aids, um, even screen TVs that can magnify things so that you can be able to do some of your regular activities. So that is something that can be very useful for a patient to be able to uh, feel more vibrant and alive doing some of the things that they have been able to do in the past. Um, then also it's important to uh, find support. Uh, the glaucoma can sometimes be a, a disease that people feel very alone. Uh, they feel isolated because they feel like the world doesn't understand what they're seeing through their eyes. But when you talk to other patients who have glaucoma, you realize that you're not alone. You also get uh, information about things that they've done that have helped them that you can also emulate where you can share your story and empower someone else. Uh, support groups can be found um, as simple as in the waiting area of your doctor's office. I know that my patients who have glaucoma, they often talk to each other um, while they're waiting for their exam. And that is an area where they find support in sharing their stories with each other. Also, you can find groups or groups online uh, through Facebook. There's Facebook glaucoma groups. Uh, there's also Yahoo groups. Uh, there's also some um, sometimes local groups that you can find. Maybe your doctor can be able to give you some information about that. Uh, there's the Lion's Eye uh, Association. So there's there are ways um, of being able to get more support and also through your family, being able to share your experiences with your family. Sometimes um, if you don't talk to them about it, they don't um, have ability to understand uh, but there is ways for your family to be a, a huge support uh, in being able to uh, care for you. Uh, I will um, point out that there's a, a section in my book uh, that does talk about caregivers, a guide for caregivers of patients who have glaucoma, because it's very important for them to understand where there are sometimes limitations on trying to see glaucoma through your eyes and understand that there's need for compassion and understanding of what's going on with, um, with your, their family member. Another tip about um, uh, relating with your doctor living with glaucoma is knowing what you should ask your doctor. There's a number of different questions that you can have uh, that are important, but some I list here uh, of good questions to ask your doctor. What type of glaucoma do I have? It's very important for you to know whether you have open angle, 
uh, narrow angle, um, if there's a specific type of uh, glaucoma that you have, it's important for you to know because sometimes you might need to share this information with another doctor or with uh, other people. Being able to know what's happening with your eye is important. Also, what is your target pressure? The way that we treat glaucoma has to do with lowering the eye pressure. And so your doctors typically will set a target pressure, a place where they think that your glaucoma pressure should be in order to help stabilize uh, your glaucoma. So knowing this is, is, is powerful. So at each visit, you can ask, am I at target? And if for any reason you're not at target or if something changes, uh, you can understand why there might be need for additional treatment because you might not be at that target pressure. Um, also, knowing what are my treatment options. If the doctor says that um, things are changing and the glaucoma is progressing, we need to do something else, you can say, okay, what are my options? Um, and that is something that will allow the doctor to share with you uh, what they think might be best out of the options that are available. And then how often do I need to follow up? Follow up is vital. Uh, you need to do your part. It's a chronic condition. Uh, glaucoma doesn't go away. Whether you have treatment with drops, with uh, laser treatment, or with surgery, uh, it can be helped, it can be reduced, but it doesn't go away. And so there can be need for um, follow-up visits uh, in intervals that might be as short as um, a month. Um, but when it's chronic or it's stable, it could be three, four, maybe six months, but it's not something that just goes away and you, you go away for years. So it's important to know how often you need to follow up and if there are any activities that you should avoid. There are certain types of glaucoma or stages of glaucoma where certain activities might be a little bit um, uh, concerning or even dangerous for that glaucoma. Uh, and so it's important for you to ask your doctor based on the stage of your disease if there are any activities that you should avoid. Some other uh, tips to discuss are what else can you do? Are there any other recommendations outside of following the treatment regimen from your doctor? Well, there are definitely things that you can do in order to help um, your eyes and they are also helpful for your body. So taking care of your general health is important. Um, this helps to uh, reduce, reduce stress, um, helps to improve the ability for your, um, for, for example, eating the right foods, um, green leafy vegetables, citrus fruits have been found in studies to be very beneficial for the health of the optic nerve. So enriching your diet with that, um, trying to avoid certain things that are not healthy, like smoking or drinking too much caffeine. Um, high caffeine intake has been associated with increases in eye pressure, uh, getting enough exercise. Exercise increases blood flow to the optic nerve, um, which is helpful and beneficial for it. Reducing stress. Stress can do a lot of different things to the body that are detrimental. So any way that you can reduce stress, relax, do things that you enjoy, all of these things are helping to enrich your whole body, which includes your, the health of your optic nerve. Also, um, taking vitamins is very good. And this day of COVID, where we realize that having a good immune system is very beneficial for fighting off the um, um, being a, a prone to getting this disease. It's also uh, allowed us to know that vitamins are great for the body. Uh, there is a good vitamin supplement called Optic Nerve Formula that I do recommend for my patients. Um, based on research, there are different um, ingredients within it uh, that have been found uh, to be beneficial for the optic nerve, um, helping in terms of uh, reducing antioxidants, um, being able to uh, enrich the optic nerve tissue, increase blood flow, blood flow. And so that's something that I recommend patients to also take. Um, our, another uh, uh, area to discuss, are there any recommendations on dealing with the emotional side of glaucoma? Like I mentioned earlier, uh, glaucoma is something that uh, can weigh really heavy on the body and be frightening. Uh, and it's important that you understand that you don't want to do uh, glaucoma alone. It's not something that you uh, fight the battle just by yourself. Uh, it's, a lot, it's important to um, be uh, open with your feelings. Your feelings are important. Um, it's normal to feel scared and it's even normal to feel depressed at times. Um, but it's important for you to understand that um, you can live a good life, a full life with glaucoma. You can continue to do things that you love to do and you should. Uh, support is important for you to be able to feel normalized, for you to be able to um, feel vibrant and for you to feel like you are not alone. Um, and also glaucoma, you have to remember that glaucoma is a condition that can run in families. Uh, there's a strong hereditary component to it. So as a person who has glaucoma, realize that you are the a strongest advocate for your family to make sure that your family uh, gets screened. Um, 
awareness is important and getting screened early is important so that if it is present, it can be caught early because the earlier that it's found, the easier that it is to treat. And so if you can empower your family members who are at risk because you have it to go get their eyes checked because you don't want them to go through um, any kind of problems like maybe you've already gone through yourself, um, it's important for you to spread that word because sharing that information means caring. So as I said before, knowledge is power. Educating yourself and educating others is uh, a huge defense against fighting glaucoma. Um, again, I mentioned uh, that I love working with the Glaucoma Research Foundation because of the kind of resources that they give to patients. Um, they have a uh, booklet called The Understanding and Living with Glaucoma that I give out to my patients um, when they get diagnosed because I want them to have good information about some of the fundamentals of glaucoma. And as I mentioned before, I have a book that's coming out that I feel is a, a, a complement to what Glaucoma Research Foundation is doing because it goes over glaucoma in very simple terms. It's not a long read. It's meant for it to be very um, concise and to the point uh, and very action oriented. Breaking down what glaucoma is in simple terms so that people can digest it, be able to understand it, and to be able to even speak about it to other people with that new knowledge. And then action steps, 12 action steps from a doctor to a patient about things that I wish every patient would know so that they can take an active role in their disease. They can be able to be their best advocate for treating glaucoma. Uh, and it's a, a, a read that I feel that at the end of the book, they will feel empowered to take action. So in conclusion, living with glaucoma can feel like a daunting task, um, but if you focus on education and you focus on taking action and you find support, it's something that you can get through and live a great and wonderful life with in spite of having glaucoma. And I challenge you to try one or more of the tips that I've discussed uh, to identify what um, uh, calls to you, what problems you might have, and use these strategies to uh, strategically help find solutions, working with your doctor in order to prevent blindness so that you can live your best life with glaucoma. Thank you. Thank you, Connie, for highlighting such practical tips for patients living with glaucoma. As a glaucoma specialist, I'm grateful to have many options to help patients manage their disease. Having new and effective treatments and diagnostic tools are the direct result of years and years of dedicated research. Music